Following up on the inaugural China International Input Expo that started today and will be going on till the 10th of November. Of course, a couple of things on the table for the African continent, not just Kenya. President Uhuru Kenyatta, the president of Kenya, is attending that particular expo. And he met with Chinese President Xi Jinping ahead of the meeting, aimed at providing new channels for countries as well as regions to do business. Well, a lot to talk about. And we we are joined by James Mboleo, who is an advocate of the High Court of Kenya, as well as an international economic law expert. Now, I think the best way to begin with this particular conversation is mentioning that a lot has been said on the suitability of various development projects in the country that have been funded by the Chinese government. Your take, is it more beneficial than detrimental for Kenya and Africa as a bloc in terms of the trade relationship between China and Africa? I think of importance is uh, the fact that when we see development projects coming to Africa from China or funded by China, there are a number of things that uh, analysts uh, get concerned with. The fact is uh, some of them have been of the view that uh, there is an imbalance in the benefits to be accrued from the China-Kenya relations in terms of development. But the truth of the matter is that one of uh, the biggest boosters to the infrastructural development program of uh, the Republic of Kenya has been supported by China in, in recent years. We've seen the SGR, we've seen roads and many other structural development, which definitely goes to boosting or stimulating the economy, um, uh, which is a, a good thing for Kenya. But of course, there is also the other fact that Kenya uh, is also assisting China in realizing uh, some of its expansion um, economic program, uh, because um, Kenya is, of course, China is on the move into Africa because, uh, as everybody does know now, uh, Africa is one of the biggest markets uh, that every person is uh, looking to get a pie on. So at this particular point in time, it is important to note that, yes, there are benefits to China, there are also benefits to Kenya. The big question for most international economic analysts is, um, how, do we cl how do we close this gap? in terms of imbalance that exists between uh, the Kenya-China relations. All right, good thing you brought up the trade imbalance. Um, and obviously that is something Kenya really needs to tackle, uh, bearing in mind the unfavorable China-Kenya trade has left a 380 billion shilling gap. Now we've seen various local leaders castigate the Chinese for setting up businesses in Kenya, an upsurge of imported commodities are lo which are locally available as well. But the question is, even as we continue um, linking up with China in terms of our trade relations, um, what steps should we take as a country, bearing in mind the, uh, the leaders who are in China right now? What should they do to actually limit this trade imbalance between Kenya, Africa, and the East? As you know, the China-Kenya imbalance is extremely high because um, it is about 90% tilted in favor of China. And uh, that is something to get worried about. How you will also understand that, of course, Kenya is uh, a much more smaller economy compared to uh, the giant, the giant e economically speaking, that China is. Um, we, we will note that China is really the economy uh, driver of the world right now. It is the, the factory of the world. And so you're not going to have a scenario in which, in terms of production, manufacturing, and processing, Kenya is going to be competitively um, competing with China. So what we can do is try to stop this gap a little. Now, in terms of uh, the representation we have in, Kenya, in, in China right now, of course, you've seen uh, that the Kenya delegation is uh, led by a strong team headed by the President of the Republic of Kenya with cabinet secretaries and so on. Now, we need, as a Kenyan people, to push for nothing less than um, the opening of uh, the, the Chinese market to those Kenyan products that we can call Kenyan. Uh, we, we're talking about agro-processing products, we are talking about coffee, tea, and so on and so forth. Because 
Um, in terms of manufacturing, there is really not much we can speak about right now which we can export to China. So our biggest strength is definitely going to be in the agricultural sector, products out of agro-processing, horticulture, and um, uh, we're talking about here about flowers, we're talking about uh, tea, coffee, and any other uh, commercial um, agro-products that we can get for now. So right now you understand that there is um, an opportunity for Kenya to... Um, to, to provide a leadership, especially in Africa, in as far as um, uh, opportunity for, for um, exporting into China is concerned, because Kenya has uh, um, a number of uh, things going for it, including a very well-developed uh, tea sector and a very well-developed um, coffee sector. And we know that these are products that are really in demand across the world. So what we need to do is, as we push for the expansion of the market into China, uh, we need to make sure that we have developed the processing of these products to a lot more, more finer products than we are currently doing. Because right now, most of the products we expose to China are in raw form, uh, which really doesn't quite um, uh, do very well in those kind of markets. The other thing that we need to bear in mind is that the Kenyan delegation needs to uh, bring on board other African participants so as to push for the reduction or elimination of tariffs with respect to some of okay. these products. Because okay, that's the James only way that uh, the Kenyan progress are going to be able. Yes. Well, thank you. Um, allow me to um, introduce Akisa Wendera, who is following up on the inaugural China International Import Expo. Even as we'll link up with you later on, um, she is in Shanghai, China. Obviously on that particular expo that is set to run till the 10th of this particular month. As we well know, President Uhuru Kenyatta met before this particular expo with the Chinese President Xi Jinping. And a couple of things were on the table, including strengthening cooperation with China to promote common prosperity of the world economies and trade. But one particular thing that might stand out for Akisa is a trade imbalance and the pending elimination of tariffs in African countries. Perhaps enunciate more on this particular topic. Well, Jesse, you're right. That is something that has been widely discussed here at the inaugural China International Import Expo here in Shanghai, the largest city in China. And the trade imbalance continues to be the thorn in the flesh of not just Kenya as a country, but the entire African continent. That even when President Uhuru Kenyatta was giving his speech, he was not just talking about an imbalance on Kenya, but on Africa as a bloc. When you talk about the Sino-Africa relations, or relations, if you like. So, specifically, the president of Kenya, while giving his keynote address, being one of the two African leaders who gave their address in this particular expo, said that it's time for Kenya and China, as well as Africa and China, to look at what is mutually fair for both of them, to look at how they can achieve the win-win situation, as opposed to the trade imbalance being witnessed um, across board when you look at the kind of exports of goods and services that get into the country uh, uh, put at, in 2017, according to statistics, put at about 390 billion shillings. But when you look at what Kenya exports to China, it's a paltry 10 billion shillings. So it's a gap of 380 billion shillings. When you look at Kenya, that needs to be bridged. So that is something that we have had a conversation with Ambassador Monica Juma, the Foreign Affairs Cabinet Secretary, who says this is going to be one of the key areas that they are going to be focusing on. And the President, um, even while giving his address, remember he just uh, come from having uh, bilateral talks the previous evening with the Chinese President, and he proposed some steps that he thinks will ensure that this particular gap has been bridged. One of them, he says, that uh, China needs to relook reduce uh, or completely eliminate the tariffs on trade to ensure that it is an incentive for those who intend to access the big consumer market of 1.3 billion consumers here in China. The president also talks about um, uh, 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 China offering technical support on, ta on sanitary and, uh, and phytosanitary, uh, especially because when you look at China and the standards they've put up, 
um, when it comes to sanitary and phytosanitary because Kenya is intending uh, to export fresh produce. So when the standards are this high, then uh, Kenya is looking at how they can um, go in line with these guidelines that have been put up by China. The president also asked for um, a co uh, to open up the space and ensure that uh, businesses from Africa get a chance to uh, expose themselves, get a chance to market themselves in China, for them to be able uh, to uh, familiarize themselves or get consumers to familiarize themselves with what they have to offer. But of course, the Chinese president said these are things that they will be looking at. The issue of tariffs is one that they discussed in the bilateral talks they had with President Uhuru Kenyatta.